onset of the year, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, released a seasonal rainfall prediction that indicated a lengthy wet season in 2020. The agency also stated that the general outlook will range from normal to above normal. The forecast weather pattern being witnessed in several parts of the country began in the second quarter of the year, with indications that torrential rains are pending. Now, how should Nigerians prepare for the attendant consequences of flooding? And what would be the impact on agriculture, among other sectors? This subject informs our topic today on Panorama, coming to you from the NTA Lagos Network Center. I am Dotson Ogwemi. Thanks for joining us. Now let's begin. A tripartite executive, legislative, and leadership of the All Progressives Congress Consultative Committee has been inaugurated in a deliberate attempt at enhancing democracy and good governance in the country. President Muhammad Buhari, who performed the ceremony, promised to lead and find solutions as he places great faith in the committee towards improving service delivery to Nigerians. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has details. State House the Tripartite Consultative Committee is aimed at creating the desired synergy among the executive, legislature, and the governing party towards delivering effectively the administration's core promises of securing the country, enhancing the economy, and fighting corruption for sustainable national growth and development. The Tripartite Consultative Committee will build a greater collaboration to deliver on the promises, position our party which has been rejuvenated, enhance legislative processes, and enable government perform better. Inaugurating the committee, President Muhammad Buhari said with the governing APC, commanding a clear majority in both the Senate and House of Representatives, taking Nigeria to the next level is a task that must be done. This, he however said, can only be achieved through effective coordination, collaboration, cooperation, and communication between the leadership of the various arms of government and the governing party. We must admit to ourselves that our party has been too often embroiled in bitter and on occasions totally unnecessary squabbles, costing us seats in legislative and gubernatorial elections. These never should have happened. We are here to make sure such occurrences do not happen again. We must now ensure regular consultations between the party and the governments. Expressing fine belief in the doctrine of separation of powers, which he described as fundamental to the nation's constitutional democracy, the president, however, said the practice should be a harmonious checks and balances devoid of petty rivalry. As one government, we must further align ourselves and be alive to our electoral promises. We need to nurture our party, which is a platform that will take us and our country forward. I am placing great faith in this consultative committee to help improve our governance and achievements to the people of Nigeria. Your success will directly enhance the success of this administration and greatly improve the conditions of our people. Senate President Ahmed Lawan, Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila, and the Chairman, APC Kiatika, an extraordinary convention planning committee, Governor Mai Mala Buni of Yobe State, were unanimous that with the Tripartite Consultative Committee, Nigeria and Nigerians will witness much difference in governance and service delivery. So it is incumbent upon us, as an administration and as a party, to ensure that we meet the expectations and aspirations of Nigerians. This is not in any way to compromise the independence of the legislature. If anything, is to strengthen the legislature. What this is about is that we don't allow the approach of 2023 to affect governance. And how do you not allow 2023 to affect your policies? By bringing your men together. 
that's what a responsible party will do, and that's exactly what uh, Mr. President has done has done has done today. The party is very happy with this development, with this tripartite arrangement to deliver on our promises. It is in the best interest of Nigerians and the party. The tripartite consultative committee, first of its kind under the Buhari presidency, is chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshibanju. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Now to security. The four special forces command in Duma of Nasarawa State handed over 778 women and children of terrorists captured recently to governors of some affected states. Joshua Kibu's report is presented in this package. The Special Forces Command in a joint operation dispersed the camps of the terrorists in Nasarawa West Senatorial Zone. Breakdown of the 778 captured persons include 86 women and 232 children from Niger State, 20 women, 64 children from Kano, others 15 women, 42 children from FCT, 13 women, 26 children from Katsuna, and 20 women, 43 children from Sokoto State. Similarly, Kebi State with two women and seven children, Kogi State, 15 women and 31 children, Kaduna State, 12 women and 16 children, Bauchi State, four women and 12 children, and Borno State with seven women and 18 children. In the same vein, seven women and 22 children from Adamawa, three women and nine children from Zamfara, eight women and 11 children from Nasarawa, three women and four children from Jigawa, two women and seven children from Gombe, five women and 11 children from Kwara, as well as one woman only from UB. I've been using these villages as camp to list mayhem of victims. But those of them on the road, so please come out, surrender their arms. Well, we have accepted to take them to another state and also, if identified, take them to their various local government with their, to uh, integrate them with their family. The weather is becoming more and more inconsistent, confusing most ordinary Nigerians. In Lagos State, for example, many who experienced rainfall in August 2019 expected same weather events to play out this year. But no, instead, the clouds took a pause maintaining the August break tradition. Hingunu John Adams in this report sheds more light on irregular rain patterns in Lagos. Nigeria has a tropical climate with variable dry and rainy seasons. Typically, the dry season runs from November to March. The period is often dry with dusty dry winds ushering in the Hamatan. And almost immediately, the heat and haze are overtaken by the core rainy season from the month of June. From June, Series of rainfall characterized by challenges of flash floods linger till November with respite during the August break, a short period that lasts two to three weeks. In recent years, however, the weather has not exactly followed this pattern. It has been topsy-turvy and unpredictable, particularly for the layman. This year the rain has not fallen too much. It was, it's so surprising. Everybody knows that uh, if there is no rain, there is going to be a scarcity of food because the farm product will not germinate at all. As if the confusing rainfall pattern is not enough, there have also been instances when intense rains spring surprises in January, giving the Hamatan a back seat. Is there an explanation for this? This is likely attributed to a phenomenon that is known as climate variability. Climate variability is caused by several reasons, and one of those reasons is the scenario of the orbits of the sun, of the earth around the sun, and it also can be affected by the changes in atmospheric chemistry. 
Uh, when we talk about atmospheric chemistry, we are referring to the, the increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases. Human activities, scientists insist, greatly affect the climate system, with many nations already having records of persistent change in weather pattern over a period of time. Experts say there is need for strategic planning and adaptation measures to ensure the effect of inconsistent rain pattern does not affect lives and livelihoods in Lagos and other parts of the nation. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. Taking the issue further is a climatologist and environmentalist, Professor Emmanuel Ladipo. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you. Good afternoon. And we're in the last quarter of the year. And um, what is the outlook of the weather? Are we expected to see more torrential rains? Yes, I, I would say yes. At least there's a 70 to 80 percent probability that you'll be getting a lot of high rainfall events in the southern part of Nigeria as soon as the rains in the northern part withdraw. Uh, we're expecting very high intensity rainfall to compensate for all the break that took place in the months of July and August in the southwest in particular. All right. Flooding and flash floods have been recorded and occurring in some parts of the country. What can be done to let this kind of situations be contained? The, the first thing to be done is to accept that it will always be there. There's nothing we can do. The rainfall pattern of Nigeria is such that a lot of rains occur in the south between the months of June and July, and then we break, and then a lot of rain in, August, in the northern part between the months of July and August. Then the rains will turn back to the southern part in the months of September and October, and even up to uh, November. So floods definitely are likely to occur in the south in the months of June and July, in the north in the months of late July and most of August, and then back again to the south in the months of late August and September. Therefore, that's the first is to accept that that is the normal thing. The intensity might change from year to year. And whether we like it or not, don't let us forget that we have two main rivers in the northern part coming from Niger all the way from Mali, nine countries that more or less contribute water to River Niger, and then from the Cameroon that contribute water to River Bene. By the time, by the next week, for instance, a lot of the water that came from the north, northern part of uh, Nigeria will be arriving and will be causing a lot of flood. But even then, before they arrive in the Nigerian border, a lot of rains have been accumulating in some of the rivers of Kaduna, Sokuto, and all the rest, and contributing a lot of water. And the next thing is to accept that the topography of Nigeria, many parts of northern Nigeria, is very plain. So any little rain will not be able to move. And that's why you find Kebi uh, this week, uh, last week. The whole of Kebi was more or less flooded. And in the, you know, I used to drive across those areas before. It's very plain land. It, water will not move. So we have to accept that one. Once we accept that that's the reality, then how do we deal with them? There's no other way to deal with them other than to plan. And what we mean by plan is what we call integrated waters resources management system that we take all these rivers as systems not by state the rivers don't know the state boundaries they are there they move from place to place they only know how to flow so it doesn't matter whether it's coming from niger state or kebi state or Kogi state or kuala state take the river niger in nigeria as a system and plan on how to use the water resources of this Niger River and the Bayway River effectively to minimize the flooding that they do occur every year, whether we like it or not. And what do I mean by integrated water system management? You take the whole river, know the amount of volume of water you're expecting on the average in the particular months of the year, and plan how to divert out of this water to possibly smaller, smaller dams 
not for over energy generation, but for at least water provision. They are inviting them into smaller dams so that when they are full in this month we are talking about, the water will be able to go into some areas. In most of the urban cities, in the urban areas, where a lot of flash floods take place, a lot of the land is because there are no drainage system. Have good drainage system. In Lagos, for instance, let the Lagos State Government accept that water transportation is a major means of transportation and open up a lot of canals that can be used to transport people rather than using all these roads and causing all this construction, congestion every day. So the water has its own advantage, but if we do not use it well, if we do not manage it well, then it becomes a disaster for us. Otherwise, I think most of these things I complain about is because we have no land to attract, uh, to address them properly. So let us agree that's the normal way that we have to be looking for. Climate change may be contributing to it, and intensity may be changing, but we have to devise ways by which I manage the water effectively. Once we agree, then we'll be able to move forward. But it has to be done in an integrated manner, not state by state, not region by region, but the whole system by which the federal government takes the lead and all the states work together to develop what we call a master plan for the management of this river, uh, uh, the flash floods or the river floods. All, all right, Professor Ladipo. A few months ago, um, homes in Lagos um, were flooded, and um, this seemed to be the situation every year. Uh, although so far this year we've not had the kind of rains that we had, and some people are saying that that prediction um, might is looking a bit, um, sh you know, very not the rains have not fallen yet in Lagos. Uh, how do we begin now to prepare um, not to see such situations again? With, with particular reference to Lagos, the, the, there's, Lagos is a water locked area. But it's not too bad for good management. I, I'll give you an example. Amsterdam, much of the Netherlands, 30% of Netherlands is below sea level. And they have delta rivers and everything moving around them. And they have been managing the Amsterdam and all the cities to, to minimize the flows, not that there's not flows by looking at the total topography of the area. We've made some mistakes, we just have to go back. The way we settled Lekki axis, the way we settled Victoria Island, all those axes all the way towards Ekwe, they are not right. These are areas that will have been completely mapped out and master plan developed with good canal systems. And then the area elevated to proper sand filling so that when it rains, water will be able to find its level back to the lagoon. But now everybody has settled it, and it's so difficult to really create the, the necessary channels that can drain this water. So I think people have to be ready that every year they just have to accept that the rich also cry by having to wait through water to reach their houses on a the, on the yearly basis. But the government can still do a lot of things. A lot of things by not waiting till it starts to rain before all these canals are properly clean. We have nearly three or four months of dry season. That is when all the channels should be cleared. And if possible, with government uh, support, create them in form of uh, cemented yeah. channels, yeah. not creating the mud and removing the mud that will be washed back where the rain comes. If you have very good uh, canal drainage system, yeah. then a lot of these problems will be solved. I and mean, some of them can be made of its own lag, that some of the little, little boats can fly them and, they are, and use them for the water transport system that can connect a lot of places. Oh, to oh, like oh, oh, oh all right. All right, Professor, thank you so much for your insight and time today. We've been speaking with Professor Emmanuel Ladipo, a climatologist and environmentalist. Thank you very much. Let's now take a break. Panorama continues shortly. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. 
stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. To COVID-19 updates. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed 143 new cases of coronavirus in the country as at the 31st of August, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 54,008. The new cases were recorded in 17 states and the FCT. The breakdown shows that Plateau again recorded the daily highest number of cases with 35, followed by Kaduna with 21, Lagos 19, FCT 13, Eboi 9, Adamawa, Enugu, and Katsina have 7 each, Edo 6, Kwara 5, Oshun 3, while Anambra, Kanu, and Niger States, as well as Ogun, have 2 cases each. Benue, Bornu, and Sokoto recorded 1 new case each. The total number of patients discharged so far stands at 41,638, with 1,013 deaths recorded, sadly. The Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 has expressed concern over what it called the alarming reduction of sample collection and testing for COVID-19 in the state, which account for the low number of confirmed cases in recent time. Chairman of the Tax Force, Boss Mustafa, says there is more work to be done at the sub-national levels. Mitairi Igben reports. The declining cases of Nigeria's confirmed COVID-19 cases lately triggered enthusiasm among Nigerians about flattening the curve in the country. But the PTF does not share the enthusiasm, citing complacency in sample collection and testing in the states as the weakest link so far in the national response. In spite of our enhanced testing capacity, the number of samples collected for testing have not been very encouraging. We still urge the states to expand the scope of their sample collection. One state, for example, tested over 35,000 in July and less than 20,000 in August, while another dropped from 23,000 in July to about 4,000 in August. Actually, no local government is collecting sample in Kogi State. So I think we can appreciate where, what is happening in the state and um, where we are having very low sample collection for the month of August. State governments are urged to take a cue from Plateau State on contact tracing, case detection, and testing. My plea to the states is please test. It's the fastest way we can get on top of this problem. If you test widely and you don't find a case, then great. We can open up and we can get back to normal uh, fairly quickly. The Minister of State for Education gave an update on some students who initially tested positive for COVID-19. Roughly about 10, 20 of them. But we've confirmed that all of them are back in class. They have not been tested negative. All of them are discharged. We do not have any further cases. There were four in Gombe, there was one in um, Kwara, there was um, a few in Bayasa. As to whether we're reopening schools at all, that discussion is ongoing. We've received the feedback from all our universities. Um, they've, been, they've responded as to their pre state of preparedness. And that is being tabled at the PTF. And we've agreed on a framework that will decide how they come back to schools. In the words of the chairman of the tax force, Boss Mustafa, this is not the time for government at any level or even citizens to succumb to fatigue in the fight against COVID-19, as the virus itself is not fatigued in penetrating the populace. In Abuja, Mitaire, Igben, NTA News. It was Amanzi Marcos. The National Association of Nigeria Professional Footballers rose from its general meeting held over the weekend 
and resolve that the Nigerian Football Federation should put in place rules that will compel players to engage FIFA or NFF intermediaries in signing of contract called for establishment of the Players Status Committee and National Dispute Resolution Chamber, NDRC, customized Nigeria Professional Footballers Pension Scheme, and approve the suspension of the Union State Administrative Council elections earlier scheduled for September in order to accommodate the ongoing reconciliation move to merge the two players associations among many other resolutions. From Iloni, Ahmed Fulani reports that Kwara State Government has resolved to rehabilitate the dilapidated facilities at the Kwara Football Academy in Iloni with the remittance of about 95,000 euros being the percentage due to the academy. From the sales of Super Eagles 4, Dennis Emmanuel Benaventure to FC Zoya of Belgium. From Asaba, Austin Edemodu reports that the Delta State Sports Commission has reiterated its commitment to maintain the leadership positions in winning laurels at national and international competitions alongside producing athletes for the country's national teams in the last 29 years. The commission maintained that its goals are achievable with existing sports facilities and execution of the various school and grassroots programs. It is for us to be tender winning, um, uh, what do you call it, glory. From the foreign scene, at the time of filing this report, Barcelona assured there is no meeting scheduled with George Messi. The club wants to convey firmness in its decision not to negotiate, but all roads lead to an imminent George Messi and Bartimeu summit. Leonel's father will have to press for a move. In another twist, President of Argentina, Alberto Fernandez, has called on Lionel Messi to return to his homeland and end his career with the New Year's Old Boys. With sports updates, Olum J. Kutola, NT News. That sports update was by Olumide Ekuntola. And it's on that note that we'll wrap up Panorama today. Many thanks for watching.